Okay, Mr. Ashton Frey from Deluxe City. Time to make your friends hate you. <laughs> it's about to get bad. <laughs> Let's see what we can do about our friendships. Or lack thereof. Hey. That means no chocolate porridge for me. Um, okay, so this time I need to stretch the truth, I do believe. Okay. Yep. Obviously, I couldn't just say, Hey, Becca, you know the rights? They are suspected to be ringleaders of a crime syndicate and shit like that. Protocol or otherwise, there are so many things I'm not allowed to tell the others. Even if I am able to share information with civilians, knowing anything could very well put them in danger. That's why I keep it vague. Obscure the facts, or when push comes to shove, stretch the truth and lie through my teeth. It's a necessity I've grown to deal with. It has already become a part of me, no matter how much I loathe doing it. I mentioned it, didn't I? I saw an old friend and I thought I'd catch up. Didn't really notice how long our chat got. You know what they say about time flying when you're having fun, and Lloyd is a fun guy. Ah, yes, Lloyd, our good friend. She doesn't look convinced. At all. Although she's the very picture of someone who's at least willing to listen, her glare effectively takes a good 20 off my current years. How old am I? Ah, I'm nine again. I feel like a kid again, being reprimanded by my junior high teacher for sleeping in class. But getting away with that is easier than with this one. It's a thing with someone you've been friends with for so long. They're the ones who know you inside out. Good grades wouldn't be enough for Rebecca to let this whole thing slide. So, this Lloyd is a friend of yours who was at the party. Yeah. Yeah, we go way back in the police academy. Though, you wouldn't have met him. See, he mostly deals with teenagers and gets into a lot of messy stuff and... <sighs> Cut the shite. You're not a very good storyteller, Ash. Don't try to make up a character just so that you can lie to me. Why did I ever think this is a good idea? Although I'm not making those people up, only twisting the facts, for someone who's already angry beyond reason, everything will sound like an excuse. I'm not making stuff up. I did have a college mate named Lloyd. Okay. I think you would have liked him. You're both Scottish. <laughs> he used to hang out a lot with Joey and Rashid, but they went off to work in London. You know, if you're both Scottish, then you have to have, you know, liked each other. Bunch of good guys. I should really ask if they're swinging by Lux anytime soon. That doesn't make things any better. You were there because I invited you. And you just up and turned your nose from me. You might as well have disappeared completely for all you cared. Just say you don't want to talk about it instead of lying to my face. I do feel guilty. Still, we've already been down this road. This is something I've done so repeatedly in the past. Something she's heard from me more times than all of my fingers could count. Something I'll just have to get over with at this moment. I'm sorry, you know that, Becca. I really, really am. Really? I wouldn't do this shit if I didn't have a good reason to. And you know that I don't like you lying to me! If you can't tell the truth, just don't say anything and shut your gob! <laughs> shut your gob. I swear, Ashton Frey, you are just so... Dense! I'm... I'm so angry, I can't even bear to look at you right now because I swear, I swear I'll knock you right off your block! I'd like to see that, actually. I mean, what good reason could you have to act like an antisocial asshole? The only time you did talk to me was to rail on me about Luke! What was that all about? So many story updates. Were you somehow expecting me to just accept everything as it is? You really shouldn't go near that man, Becca. Why? Because you don't trust him? I wonder if you actually trust anyone. Aside from the three of us, Zack, Isabella, and myself, do you even have any other friends? Isn't three friends plenty to have as it is? If you're perfectly fine with that, then go ahead. No one is stopping you. But don't expect me to share the same views. I can have a life of my own. Friends that I don't necessarily share with you. I'm an adult, Ashton, and I can make my own bloody decisions. I sure as hell can choose the people I want to let into my life. Wow. Of course she's allowed to do as she pleases. I never mentioned she couldn't. 
Us growing up together doesn't mean it always has to be just the two of us. It's a dumb idea to believe in when nothing ever remains constant, Becca. Things will inevitably change through the years. She'll make friends with people outside of our little circle. I'm just as free to form relationships with other people. But why, of all people, did it have to be him? Why does it have to be Luke Wright? That guy is nothing but trouble. How can she defend a guy like that? She's already calling him Luke, for Pete's sake. I trust Zach, I trust Isabella, and I trust you, Rebecca. So why can't you trust me on this? You need to stay away from that man. Because he's... I... I really wish I could tell you. What was that saying Isabella mentioned before? A liar is a brother of a thief. People who look at me now will probably say I'm a hair's breadth away from being a criminal. Z-Man said something like that once a few years into our friendship. I laughed it off back then. But now? They're... They're probably right. Little by little, I'm becoming the very kind of person I hate. You've been trying to get into the mindset of the guy you've been trying to catch for years for so long that you've slowly become like him. Yeah, that's probably not a good thing. How ironic. The silence afterwards brings an even, even heavier air between us. Something that Rebecca thankfully doesn't allow to linger more than necessary. I suppose you have to go now, huh? Yeah... I probably should. <laughs> Thanks for the segue, Becca. I should probably go and contemplate my life choices. We'll find a way. Somehow. I don't know. I'm glad we get to see this from your perspective. What's your inner thoughts on speaking up? Being all out of character like that. Is there... Uh, let's see... Unable to tell her any details, the latter chose to stretch the truth. It led to another argument and ended with Rebecca slamming the door close on him. This appears to be more complicated than I initially thought, but there has to be some way. Reassurances have always felt foreign in my tongue. Ask me to shoot a target 500 yards away, I'll do it in a heartbeat. Assign me to a high-profile case, I'll hand in a solid lead within a few weeks. That's where I function best. Matters of the heart and feelings? Shooting myself in the foot seems preferable than racking my brain for the proper words to convey. But I try, because no matter how many times I tell myself I can do this on my own, I... I need her right now. On top of that, we don't have any concrete proof yet. For all we know, it could just be someone clever enough to use those silly legends to cover up for his crimes. I wouldn't put it past whoever that is. He's gone and killed two people already. But that's why I want to look into this, whether I have this case or not. I want to see for myself what it is. It's my job to know in the first place. Then what about- And even if it is connected in any way, you have me and Zach helping you out. Becca too, I'm sure. She worries most out of anyone. So whatever shit you found yourself in, know you're not alone. Just promise you won't run off anywhere by yourself. Encouragements aside, this is still a whole fucking mess and we're in it blind. The only way to make it worse is if we start running around like a bunch of headless chickens. But I have a concrete plan now. I think. Maybe Isabella's right. Maybe we should dig deeper into BRC itself. Maybe we are looking at it the wrong way. However, my suspicions are mine for the moment. The details are something Zach doesn't need to know until I have something to show. It's enough that he's aware that I have an idea in mind. For his part, Z-Man doesn't push it, and nothing but a heavy silence leads our departure hours later. All right. Let's fast forward again. Uh, I'm gonna have to be mean to her about her dad, too, and just be like, I'm keeping busy. I don't care you're grieving over there. Ugh, I'm gonna be the worst. Literal worst. Okay, I think we're all caught up. Just stay busy and you'll be okay. Yeah, about that. At least that was what I told myself ever since Mom and Dad called it off years ago. Retreat. Find something else to focus on. Turn that little bundle of anger, frustration, and guilt into something productive. Clean. Efficient. I'm not harming anyone. It worked for a time. So long as my grades never dipped below what people expected of me, they left me alone. It's not the best coping mechanism for a teenager, but it allowed me to get by. 
Though perhaps it's not for everyone, least of all her. I recognize my mistake the second I look up from my work after a long bout of silence from her. The expression on her face? It's nothing short of angry as she grips the folder between her hands and she glares at me with an intensity that might burn. I've said something unforgivable. To her, asking her to bury all of it carries different meaning. To her, forgetting means a denial. What do you think I'm doing? Do you really think it's that easy? Isabella, all I'm trying to say is that you should concentrate on other things right now. <laughs> that patronizing tone. And I'm not! I'm doing my best, alright? I know I got us into this mess, and now? Now after everything, despite everything, he's... he's gone. Never seen this look on her before. I didn't even get to talk to him before he... before he... The last time we spoke, he was begging for me to go home. He didn't even want me to leave in the first place. Now look where that got us. Look where I got us. Belle, this whole thing has got nothing to do with what happened to your dad. It was unfortunate, but... Ashton, just please stop. I... I, I don't want to hear it anymore. Shut it. Please. Everyone's telling Ashton to just shut up. Pathetic. I can't even do this right. Another awkward silence falls over the room. Until it all becomes unbearable and half a heartbeat later, all I can do is to step away from it. Hide, like I often do with all my mistakes. I'm just gonna leave. <laughs> Not to uh, face up to my wrongness. Um... In his attempt to comfort her, he only ended up upsetting her further. <laughs> As he does. Okay. Uh, let's see. Hastily, I gather everything. The personnel file, client documents, sales agreement, and contracts. Anything my hands could reach. In record time, all of it has been stacked in a neat pile, ready for storage. I'm heading for the records room not a few seconds later. Wherever that is. It should be an easy find, unless this place is a maze of some sort, which I highly doubt. Still be staying here and seeing the hurt on her face. Especially when I know that I'm now part of the reason why it's there. Well, I... I'm sorry. That was insensitive of me. Okay, at least you apologize right away. I don't wait for her answer because, honestly, I'm more afraid of... What it'll be, maybe? I've stepped on something she values more than anything in this world. Like this, it's easy to see why she has gone to such great lengths for her father. Why she abandoned her dreams. Why she went against his wishes. Just to grant him another chance at life. This is how she loves. Warm. Steadfast. Unflinching. What right do I have to question that? To tell her to let go when it's the one thing she has so openly given the people around her all these years. The one thing that I will always, always have no reason to doubt. Others will say it's her warmth that draws people to her, or her cheer. Neither are wrong, but neither is the whole truth to her either. Because those who have never bothered to look beyond the surface will never see it. See her. See someone earnest. Someone who has always meant well despite her underlying stubbornness. In many ways. For a lot of reasons. She's... She's the kind of person I want to be and be around with. Who made me feel I am still worth something. The way I am, her forgiveness is more than what I deserve. Except I have no right to hear it at this point in time. Ouch. Painful. But goes! Get hecked, elevator QTE. Never again. Never, ever, ever. Bleh. Go away. Alright. Time to gather the crew, who are still very much alive. And, uh, not eat the chocolate porridge. Caught up. Thanks, but I just don't really have the appetite right now. Maybe later. Briefly, she appears about to argue, her lips parting for a moment, followed by her shoulders tensing. Although just as quickly as the expression flashes across her features, it disappears. 
She closes her mouth, and with a reluctant shift in her seat, she returns to her food. Almost gone now, while the air around us changes to something filled to the brim with unspoken tension. Isabella doesn't look displeased, but disappointment clearly radiates from her posture. Thankfully, it doesn't last too long. Let's see. Uh, with reluctance, he declined, insisting he's not hungry. Okay. Before regret forces an apology up my throat, a knock shatters through the tense air, and just as fast, both our, both our attentions shift towards the source. Rather than let things get any more awkward fast, I stand up to open the door while muttering some flimsy excuse in the process. Uh, I'll get that. It's probably Zach or Rebecca. Saved by the bell. Okay, Zach, get in here so I can make you upset. Okay. Specifically, the elephant in this room, and it's a damn big elephant, considering the possible outcome Zack's cute little plan might have resulted in. I might as well let off some steam first before we go to the heart of things. Zack, we agreed you won't do anything stupid. <laughs> Zack? Really, Ashton? That's what you're gonna greet me with? No, what's up, Z-Man? <laughs> I just biked through almost half of this city to get here. I could use some friendly greetings right now. An explanation would be good, too, if you can. You weren't very clear over the phone, and I made no such promises. You said you're not going to do anything reckless. Your words, not mine. What you did is the exact opposite, and that's not the only problem here. Those people can easily sue you for breaking and entering, and believe me, I won't be able to do anything if they do. Did that cross your mind? The whole 46-acre lot is a private property. Why were you even there? I know, Ash, but the people in there might be in danger. Besides, I was looking for you. Didn't I tell you that? Why would I even go there? Well, you mentioned a plan with Isabella here. I assume that's where you guys went, since that's where she found the letter. Sorry, I was really at a dead end. Logical. Apparently I'm not done yet. Aww, instead of him giving him a noogie. Uh, upon learning that he had come from the Ermengarde mansion that morning, a very irate Ashton chided his friend for ignoring his warnings and being reckless. The logic in it stuns me into silence, to say the least. Then I remember his hesitance, the tone he has taken before agreeing to go here, and all at once my anger wanes. Partly, this is my fault for keeping things vague. I can't keep berating him for assuming that when I've only left him with vague answers. Still. You could have called me. I did. I didn't receive any, and my phone was with me. You're kidding, right? I was at it the whole night! The whole atmosphere in the room changes in two heartbeats. Back again to the tension-riddled one plaguing us. Zachary stares at me like I've grown another head, then gradually he shifts his attention to Isabella. The expression in his eyes, questioning, asking for a confirmation. Like, my word can't be trusted. Not that I'm holding it against him. I can't even believe the things coming out of my mouth these past few hours. Meanwhile, Isabella stays quiet, has been like that for quite some time. She looks like she wants to disappear right now. Guilt, frustration, anger, fear, all of flashes fleetingly across her face before it melts away under an expression of worry. Please tell me he's joking. You were there? No, we really didn't get any. Everything was quiet last night. But Zack? At BRC? Ashton and I saw a spider ghost. It was terrifying. Okay. Please tell me you did not just do something dangerous today. Grand? Before that frown even completely forms in her face, I already know that somehow this whole questioning has started off on the wrong foot. What are you implying? That you're running blindly into things? This is what I warned Isabella about the other day. Now you're doing the exact same thing. I know what I'm getting into, Ashton. Besides, it was just a trip to the library. That arm injury and the limp tell a completely different story. It... she caught me off guard! What? Did you think I went looking for her with her book in hand? I'm not stupid, Ash. And what do you want me to do, stand here? Just let that bloody ghost do whatever she wants to us? No. I want you to be careful. <laughs> no, question mark? We don't know what we're dealing with here yet. I've yet to figure everything out, so... You're not the only one who can do things here, Ash. Quit playing the damn hero, you're not! 
Ooh, got him. You should be thankful someone's even trying to help. You're lucky no one has died yet, after it apparently took you this long to come around. Oof. You're the one who kept brushing all of this off. In fact, you're the one who dismissed Isabella first. Ooh. The last one feels like a slap in the face, really. Rebecca has a knack for being brutally honest with her opinions. We've often clashed at times, yet I still respect her for it. Her opinion is as valuable as every other person's I've let into my life, and this time she's right. I've made a huge mistake. Rebecca, that's enough. Please. It's not his fault. Not anyone's. Except me. We're all here now. Everyone's safe. Alive. There's other stuff we should be focusing on. So please, just stop. Both of you. But damn it, I'm trying. And you didn't? Back at the movie house, you were agreeing with me. You're not trying, Ash. Guys, guys, chill. You heard Isabella. No blaming anymore. It's all in the past. Just let this go. We have more important matters to deal with, yeah? She still should have ran. That woman's not something you can hit with a... With a book. She did run. Believe me, Ashton, I did. Then a bloody cart came out of nowhere. Do you have any idea how painful being hit with one is? But you know what? If it weren't for a damn book, you wouldn't be yelling at me right now. I would be dead. So put that in your pipe and smoke it, Ashton Frey. When the detective pointed it out, annoyed that she might have also ignored his warnings, the redhead was quick to retaliate. Fortunately, before it brewed into, before it brewed into a fight, Isabella stepped in. I think we already kind of got there. Uh, can I... But no more fighting, okay? okay? If one of you starts another round of it, I'm going to drag the two of you out. By your ears. I'd like to see that. That marks the end of it. At least for the time being. And as soon as Isabella returns and hands Rebecca the cold compress she promised, we get straight down to business. Surprisingly easy, considering the rigid air in the room. Although there's some tense fumbling for words at first, the whole conversation gains steam once what happened last night at BRC has been put on the table. Alright. Now we can run from the ghost again! Yay! Let's go. Have a fight in the park. Wonder if it'll be a worse fight. Interesting. Maybe they don't bring him food. <laughs> you know, I just realized I really don't like Ash. <laughs> he should starve. My last shower was 24 hours ago. I haven't slept at all. And my last meal was a slice of cold pizza I bought from a convenience store the night I broke into BRC. Ah, because we didn't have the porridge. Gotcha. The way I am now, I'll definitely get a scolding. So they, they still brought him food. Okay. <laughs> it's just that he had pizza instead of porridge. That's fine, I guess. That is okay. Aw, Z-Man. I don't want to make you mad at me. Sorry, Z-Man. There are only two ways this will end. I agree with him and take him with me, or I agree with him and drop the idea altogether. Neither appeals more than the other, especially when we're all desperate for answers. So, a lie. To keep the few people I have left out of harm's way. You'll only get in the way. <laughs> his face. Um, understandably, his expression swiftly changes from worry to indignation. Perhaps he's even livid. What I'm not expecting is for him suddenly to grab me by the collar and hoist me from my seat. Sometimes I forget Zack's capable of violence as any other man, but I hold my ground, remain firm in my decision. This is no longer up for discussion. I dare you to say that again, Ash. Say it again. Say it to my face. Oh no. Do I look like I'm kidding? I'm not going in there for a stroll, Zack. And if what you heard is true, then it's just another reason for me to look into it and for you to stay here. I can't take you with me just because you asked. That isn't how this works. How does it go then? How is this any different from what you've been telling us not to do? Go, Zach. You didn't listen to me when I explicitly, very explicitly, told you not to do anything stupid. How can you expect that I'll trust you with this when you couldn't even follow a simple instruction like that? Stop it with your bullshit, Ashton. I know this ain't just about that. 
You trusted me with even more confidential stuff before. More than you did with Rebecca. Truth. What makes this any different now, huh? Is accepting other people's help that difficult for you? It's not your help that I need right now, Zach. It's... It's knowing that you're safe. That you're all safe. Away from whatever risk I'm about to jump into. Sadly, the whole of it never makes it out. G chooses the next moment to show up, slamming the flat of his palm on the counter and shooting us both a stern look. Although his tone's nothing short of jovial, the disapproval's clear in it. Boys, drummer's nice and all. I used to wash these bloody god-awful afternoon cereals with one of my brothers many, many years ago. But listen, I am not having one in my pub, all right? You two want to fight? Go out. Well, this picture's gonna be different. <laughs> Zachary's arrival interrupted Ashton's conversation with G. Left alone, the two attempted to mend things between them, only for things to turn sour again after Ashton revealed his plans to return to the mansion. At the end of it, Ashton turned away from a furious Zachary. Zach's hold of me loosens an acquiescence, an acquiesce, and like every little truths I hold, whatever's, whatever's I'm about to say dies on my tongue at G's reprimands. In the end, I'm just a coward who can never bring myself to be honest. I'd like to think it's better this way. Better that we part on unclear terms so Zack won't have to see every little insecurity, every little doubt in me right now. He's seen enough. The last thing I want him to glimpse is another display of weakness. Not when he still stares at me with the same unerring confidence in his eyes. Before anything can be said further, before more wounding words are uttered, I step away from them. Mumbling a lame excuse about taking another quick nap under my breath, altogether burying the stray thought that flashes fleetingly in my head. Zack has seen me at my lowest plenty of times. Why does all of it matter now? Indeed, Ashton Frey. Uh, what happened? Okay, so they're arguing. I should have expected it won't be as easy when my little talk with Zack this morning almost turned into a fist fight. Turns out sleep isn't just what some of us need. So... They're fighting. Okay, nothing's changed in the fight just yet. So, how are we doing with you guys? Looks like I need to upset Becca more than Bella. So, I will take Isabella's side. You okay? Oof, that jump. Um, I think I can skip. She didn't have to say that. A small frown returns to her face. Although it lacks the same anger from before, the bitterness stays. And you don't have to apologize for her. If she wants to say sorry, she has to do it herself. Nice. She has a point, though. Isabella freezes. In an instant, the pleasant air around us dissipates. It was pleasant, apparently. Um, I think I need to say it's dangerous. Did I make a note about this? I didn't, because that would have been smart. Forget it, Belle. You're not going back to that mansion. Well, that sudden music change is a good sign. But Ash, what about- This isn't up for debate. Do you really think they'll just let you in? Do you really think they'll give a damn if you walk in there carrying that stupid letter of all things? No, but there has to be something we can tell them. Ash, they were with me during the open house. They have to know. They're in as much trouble as we are. They're living in that place! That ghost woman came from there. Both her and the letter. Ghost woman. Something's in that house, Ash. And whatever it hides might be the only thing that'll get us out of this mess. Alright. Suppose you do find an answer there. What happens? Let's say that by some dumb luck, you got inside and found something. What if you see her again? What if she goes after you? What are you going to do? It's not like we have any other choice. Besides, I'm pretty sure you've already thought of the same thing. Admit it. <clears throat> that doesn't mean I'm going to let you run straight into trouble. What you're planning to do is risky for you. Give it up, Isabella. Unexpectedly, Isabella merely clams up. No resistance. No further argument like I've come to expect from her. Uncharacteristic. Just a silence that stretches far too thin till the air in the whole room grows awkward and suffocating. 
A standstill that'll get us nowhere. Although there's one thing our talk has wonderfully succeeded at, it's making me feel like a total asshole and a hypocrite. And I am considering my plans tonight. Sure, I can tell her, but what good would it do? I've already told Zack. One person is enough. Alright, can I skip? Nope. Not yet. Hell, simply letting someone in on the plan makes me iffy. Broadening that circle and revealing too much would just cause another pointless concern. But someone has to be at where, at least of where I'm heading off to, in case... In case things don't pan out. Expect the worst, even if I've only intended to do a quick survey of the place. In my own words, risky. Isabella doesn't need to be burdened with the worry my entire scheme entails. I like to think that, yes, to some extent, she understands, even if she does not entirely agree with me. The dilemma's clear in her. Otherwise, her scowl wouldn't have a deeper set to it, her lips wouldn't be pressed in a thin line, or her hand would no longer be balled into fists. She would have pushed that argument if she doesn't, and I know she has no lack of things to say. Maybe it's because she has already heard the same thing from Rebecca. Maybe my words have made her come to her senses. Either way, it's best that we simply leave it here for now. I stand up as soon as footsteps shuffle from the next room. It's cadence slow and hesitant. Alright. Apparently not changed yet. Shortly, Rebecca comes into view, clutching her hands firmly in front of her and sporting the same uncertainty in her face. She casts me a cursory look, then shifts a nervous one to Isabella, who studies her with an almost hopeful gleam in her eye. Their fights never did last long. Belle, can we... can we talk... alone? Her interruption cannot have come sooner, and I'm all the more glad for it. Whatever kind of friendship I share with the two, this remains something for only the two of them, much like my own Zack. I'm the outsider. They don't need me here. It's all the reason I need. <laughs> well, that's great. Uh, despite agreeing with her, he insisted she would only put herself at risk by coming back. Although she acquiesced, dismay was clear in her face. You still confessing? Yes, she still confessed. I don't think we accepted. Can I just, uh... Can I go back enough? Okay. He's in, so he said he's in love with someone else. Alright, just wanted to double check that. That would have been weird. Couldn't reciprocate. She left it at that. Okay. Skipping. Look, I know you'd rather see Luke Wright choke on his own wine glass, but... Damn right I do! Ha! He can just go... But are you really sure you want to leave him like this? And what about his wife? <gasps> his wife. Okay, I kind of like her a little bit more than him. All right. More blood? Hello? Charlotte? All right, you're still gonna come and save me. Thanks. Okay, so this changed again. Interesting. So, rejection? Hear her rejection. And it is one. It's all in her face, in fact. There's a pained aspect to it I can hardly name. Regardless of what it means to her or what she intends to convey with it, the sight of it alone makes me regret ever mentioning anything. It's almost as if she's about to have a panic attack. Not that I won't be able to take it, or I am expecting an answer from her. If anything, I think these past few days have proven how it might never work out between us. Though it's mostly my fault for saying all the wrong things when she doesn't need them. In the end, I just want her to know, that's all. But if knowing will also put a heavier burden on her, I'd rather not have said anything at all. As expected, soon she hastily pulls her hand away from mine, and when she speaks there is a stark refusal to meet my eyes. Not that I hold it against her. The situation's already awkward as it is. I... Ash... Belle, it's alright. You don't have to... No, no, I'm really, really sorry, Ash. 
I can't do this kind of thing right now. I'm sorry. My family still needs me. My dad just died. And then there's still this, this curse going on. I'm really sorry. I, I just don't think of you that way. Abruptly, she stands up before I can stop her, quickly backing away and putting as much distance between us. She never really makes it past even the door, though. Her foot catches on the rolling pin she dropped earlier, and soon she's landing on her backside with a shout. Imagine if she died. <laughs> From the harsh rejection she was trying to go for. Ow! Oh, such screams. Are you okay? Here, let me... No, I'm fine. It's okay. It's all right. I, I can't stand on my own. Please don't die. Brushing away the hand I've offered her, she proceeds to pick herself up from the floor, albeit shakily. Still, she refuses to meet my eye, and as soon as she can, removed herself from the attic without another word. I suppose that's to be expected. I suddenly jumped this on her. I bet the last thing she wants to do is talk about feelings when we're still in danger of dying from a curse. Hell, maybe even forget I said anything. Here's to hoping we still have the chance to fix, the fix this after we're done with the ghost problem. Probably not. Probably not gonna be good. Wow. That was an intense rejection. Isabella had only ever seen him as a friend and awkwardly turned him down. Well, time to go. Let's run through the house like crazy people and run into crazy Luke. Hey. All right. Keep Ash alive so we can deal with the consequences of our actions. Hey, Hana. I don't know how we're going to get you down this time. I don't know if anyone's going to stand up for you. We'll see. Okay. And Luke. Hmm. Drunken rattled. I had tried to get knackered, hoping to score another taste of mint while I was out in the city. Really? Though I can't bring myself to go home with another woman in the end. If I did go with someone, it might have been too late. Just thinking about it. No one might have gotten to Hana in time had I not gone home earlier than I intended. So here I am, sulking with a glass of wine. I'd be a hypocrite if I don't let her go, besides. Daisy would laugh her arse off or be filled with horrible pity if she knew. That's so funny that we're thinking about both of them this time around. I'm not supposed to let someone else define me. And if I refuse to let her go, I'd be forcing myself to define her. She's had her uses. She's done a lot for me. Cheers for something or another! <laughs> Yay! A brat going away to college. A bonus at the job. Couples having it off. Those happy things, I suppose. Whatever. I don't give a fuck. A bit less eloquent than your <laughs> usual speeches, but... Zum Wohl. I'll drink to it anyway. A sip. Mint got me a bit into the whiskey, but other than that... Uh, I've been trying real hard. You can vouch for me, right, Joe? Joe. I haven't put my hands on a pretty lady unless they asked me to. Not that I did that before, but you get my point, Joe. <laughs> Please don't call him Joe. Miss Pink is right. I don't know how she can even put up with me. She deserves far better than me. But I don't want Hannah to leave me, Joe. Oh, God, she's the love of my life, you know? I'm a shiny human being without her. I should... Flowers. Lots and lots of flowers. All of the flowers. <laughs> enough to make the Queen's Gardens look like a fucking dumpster fire in comparison. I cannot underscore how much I love this. All well and good. But you are not achieving any of that while you are lying on the carpet. Now, if you can lift your skinny ass and work with me. Eins, zwei, drei. But I don't want to go to bed. The moon is so pretty tonight. I should just let you sleep on the ground, Bratwurst. But the moon! The moon, Joe! The moon! Oops. I didn't... I, I did the wrong. That's what I did. 
I did the wrong. Uh, pissed off at recent events. Yeah, apparently involving Mint and Daisy. Who would have known? Alright, grab my knife. Not that that's gonna help me much. But, you know, book worked. Maybe a knife will too. Okay, so... Moving swiftly on. Oof, man. Things are not great. But that was kind of the point, wasn't it? Alright, just gonna throw those away in just a second. Pretty lady. Whoa, 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 pretty lady. Okay, I'm so curious to see how this is all gonna end. You all hate each other. Hmm? Though I'll deny it, I do find myself a tiny bit interested about McCullough. I called her secretary about taking the day off. He hasn't heard from her over the weekend. Never consider she might be putting her paycheck to good use. Probably someone out there getting drunk, having a shag. Ugh, and I envy her for it. Ugh. As long as she's here for work, what and who she does in her free time is her business. Hell, maybe she's found another client to sleep with. I'll commend her if that is the case. It's a good way as any to make connections and get business. I would be a hypocrite and a liar if I said I didn't get some of my business that way. Oh, really? Scratches the itch, too. That's all well and good, but she's not answering her mobile, either. Mr. Parker will be filling a missing person's case with the police if she doesn't turn up today. Okay, interesting as all this is, why bring this to my attention? If we've lost an interior designer, just find someone else to take her place. If I knew that letting Hana hire her would bring so much trouble, I would have stopped it at just the sex. The last anyone has seen of her was here. The morning of the party. Your housewarming party. That isn't good news. Mm. It wouldn't do for the police to hear of this and to suspect. It's a little import. I can easily prove my innocence. It's the principle of the matter. You understand, Kylie, right? The little brat is quick to defend her favorite academic as well. The woman has yet to offer a proper apology, and she wishes to give one on her behalf, all diplomatic-like, like I taught her. Alright. She's apologizing on Miss Pink's behalf, that's very sweet. Kylie, you're so cute. Hey girl, <laughs> time to run. Hi Joe, can you save me from myself? Probably not. All right. It's time. Time for everything to get wrapped up in a nice little bow. Oh, I get the chance. Interesting. It's not taken away from me this time. Very, very interesting. But I'll have to keep quiet all the same. Sorry, Hana. Whew. Even less than the other girls. Alright, nobody likes us. Maybe Zack and Isabella, but that's about it. I'm just a coward. Did you catch her? Did somebody catch my girl Hana? I hope so. Ah, she still punched you. Nice. All right. Scream, scream, screams. All right. Uh, let's just burn the letter, I guess. Might as well leave the house intact. Can I read the journal? Yes. Clear that up. Okay. Um, let's save this here. So we can look at our leaf afterwards. 
All right, so you're leaving on a jet plane. Okay. Ah. Although she makes the decision out of convenience, she won't deny also doing it out of a desire to avoid another awkward encounter with Rebecca Gales. Following the aftermath of the curse, the relationship between the two girls have turned lukewarm at best. While no harsh words have been exchanged yet, their wordless silences since the incident has only pushed them further apart. Isabella leaves her home of five years with a heavy heart. And even though she has jokingly complained about Rebecca's bossy attitude in the past, she confesses missing the woman's fussing. Despite their tense parting, she still carries hope they will one day be able to fix whatever has come between them. But if there will be a chance for it, is a question they both ask until now. Okay. You guys don't like each other. Oh, this... this hurts. An argument ensues between the two shortly after they have been released from the Ermengarde Memorial Hospital. Why were you guys in the hospital? Oh, I see. You got into a fight and went, ah, uh, hmm. Although the whys are vague and both have been tight-lipped about the matter after the fight has been broken off, with the room evident only from bits of conversation bystanders have heard. Perhaps it's even an old grievance they have been holding against each other, only aggravated by whatever horrific things they've both gone through inside the mansion. Whatever the reasons, the two men have kept a considerable distance from each other since then. Ashton gives the man a wide berth when encountered in a public place. Zack simply avoids places the detective frequents. People who know them have simply assumed the spat will resolve itself in due time. But for the two of them, the way things have panned out, in due time may never even come to pass. Ooh. Hanging by a thread. Wow. It's all shattered. All the happy endings that, that could have been. Wow. They never talk of what happened inside the Ermengarde mansion, nor of the curse. Never in friendly conversation. Seldom in casual banter. Not to anyone. To each of them who remains, it is a memory better left alone, never to be disturbed. But on days, it comes back to them when the memories are particularly vivid. A different hurt surfaces. One that cuts far deeper than any horrors they've seen. One that has crumbled right in their very eyes, leaving nothing but the last strains of an old song they used to sing. And when its last notes fade into silence, one thing slowly becomes clear. The curse has taken something far more valuable from them. Their friendship. Okay. Well, Kylie's definitely gonna die, so I don't need to watch that happen. Not with the ending we got. Wow. I'm so sad. Um, okay, let's load that. Take a look at the branching tree. Okay, Bella, what you got? 85%. Okay. That'll be next time. Okay, so we've done... Alright, we did all that. Some story updates I still haven't updated. Ashton's not here. Okay. That's all unlocked. Almost. This is going with Ash. No, that's Zach, and this is Ash. Okay. Yeah, we're close there. That's pretty good. Don't know what that story update is. Maybe if we show Rose the letter, that unlocks. Okay, that's the. We'll see that soon, too. Break is needed. Okay. This is still locked off. Okay. Nice, that's all unlocked. Okay, still some story updates that are missing. That's okay, it's alright. Cool, cool, cool. Alright. Nice. Okay. And this is all still locked. 80% with Marianne. Well, isn't that pretty cool? Okay. 
Well, things are slowly starting to fill out, you know? Slowly, slowly. Rebecca. Man, almost all of this is unlocked. That's pretty cool. And all of that. <laughs> I think that's Death City for us, my friends. Death City awaits us one of these days. Okay. Oh boy. Yep. Lots of Death City. Most likely. Okay. Unlock a lot of story updates there. That's pretty cool. Alright. Good. Ashton's now at 30%. I don't think we did... <laughs> I think Luke is still at 11 Because, you know, of course he is. Alright. And a lot of this is filled out. I'm quite pleased, actually. Hmm. Ah, Rebecca alive. At least that one tells me. Good, good, good. Alright, let's... We skip so much stuff until here. Maybe unlock some more story updates, and then we go to the top, which skips a lot of stuff. Then we go down here, and up there, and over there. There is so much in here that we're going to see one of these days. <laughs> All right. Okay, how far does this... There we go. Avoided something there. Ah, one up here. I think that's new. I think that's a new node. Okay. Then that back up here. Whole bunch of story updates there that haven't triggered yet. And here. Okay, let me go up there, whatever that story update is. Man, we go all over the place with Ashton, up and down and all around. I feel like with Luke, we maybe unlocked a couple more story nodes, and that's about it, really. No, no major paths probably opened up. At least I'd be surprised, since it's like at 11%. Okay, that's still a update. There's still some updates on this path that we've never gotten. Call for an ambulance. Alright. Went up there. Avoided that this time. Okay. Alright. Good. Grand. <laughs> Excellent. Going up and down and... Apparently we went there and down here? Okay. Don't know how we managed to do that, but okay, I'll take it. Oh man, all kinds of... Story updates there. And there. Whoop. Alright. Yeah, actually a few things did open up. How is that? Yeah, this is the long stretch that we avoid. <laughs> Probably like, who's alive and who's dead and all that kind of good stuff. Haven't even touched that yet. Alright. I went here. That's probably burning the letter. Ending for variant B. Epilogue. Okay. Interesting. Well, I think I'm going to sneak in the friendship ending with our guys onto this one. So I will go through and pick the choices that are needed. I have a walkthrough for it. If there is a different choice, I'll bring you in for it, but otherwise we'll just Skip ahead to the epilogue and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Okay, I'll see you guys in a second. Oh, actually, before that, <laughs> I gotta press a new game. Is there a different loading screen for new game? <laughs> nope, just a caco. <laughs> okay, in that case, I'm on my way, guys. Okay, something has changed. Um, I was going to say, every choice I've taken in this, up to this point, has been the same as my very first run, believe it or not, except that I sided with Becca instead of Bella in the bar, and um, apparently I accepted her confession and we smooched. 
I believe that's what happened. Uh, what day was that? 31st, probably? Uh, yep. She kissed him. Just wanted him to know. And so, yeah, that's the only thing that changed from my first run to this run. Every other choice was the same. Uh, I picked different stuff with Hana and uh, Marianne and stuff, but that doesn't really count for this ending. However, it appears something has changed here at this scene. Quietly, I brace myself for the truth underneath that gaze. It slips from her lips softly, nearly fading under the sound of the rain still falling fast, if not for the weight in each of her words. What is wrong with you? Belle. If Zack didn't slip up, no one would have known where you went. Belle, one person knowing is enough. Any more than that, and- You almost died! He could have suffocated you right then and there, and you could have died! I told Zack to give me four hours. That would have been enough time to- It would have been too late! And by the time anyone ever finds out, you're already fertilizer! She trails off, drags one indrawn breath after another. A brief lull as her frustration finally gives, dissolves into something more pensive and somber. Her shoulders droop, and though her voice rises hoarse and weary, in her next words there is only certainty. You count too, you know? Paradigm shift. What does that mean? What is this? What is the paradigm shift? When I said that night, when I told you that I don't want to lose anyone anymore, that includes you. Alive. Do you think Ash is gonna kiss Isabella after Becca kissed him? We're still here, Ash. You have us. You have Rebecca with you. Mm. Don't make her worry like that. Okay, no. Bella's a, res a respectful girl. She doesn't step in on someone else's turf. And once their meaning fall, roar, it does so not with force of a dam breaking or a raging storm, but with the gentle, steady warmth of a hearth burning, an ember easing slowly, lightly, rising and giving until all that's left is a truth, an understanding, not alone, never alone. It lingers, even as we both drift back into silence and her words take root, because in the gratitude that swells after is another warmth blooming. Pleasant, welcoming, like finding home, like finding ourselves in the haze a squall has left, creating something fragile yet immutable in both of us. It's in her eyes, in the way she holds my gaze unwavering, in the way she carries herself despite sitting amidst a place she fears, in the way she keeps herself from trembling and falling apart because fear. Fear is inconsequential when people she cares about are at risk. A change. She realizes that now, holds on to it. Another little thing, another small thing from her that may go unnoticed and pass by quietly, but will eventually amount to a lot of things. Despite myself, a small smile slips from my lips. Some time between finding that letter and this moment, something has shifted in her. A paradigm shift. If this is the old Isabella, she'll be hysterical. Probably with a lot of things and hiding behind people involved. She won't even dare to march in here, alone, to save anyone. Who would have thought- Stop smiling like that, Ashton! I'm not done scolding you! Come on, you're not even that scary. Oh yeah? Let's see how tough you are after I tell Rebecca. Oh no, not Rebecca. Don't think I won't tell her. Oh, you are so dead when she finds out. Abruptly, she stands up and gives me a light push. Not enough force to hurt. Though I do end up sitting on my backside, laughing amusement brimming from me. Then she sticks out her tongue and blows a raspberry before quickly removing herself from the room. Some things simply won't ever change, I suppose. The banter, the small smiles, and the quiet little moments that roar. It is strength enough to keep me going as I pick myself up from the floor and follow after her. Interesting. Okay. I'm kind of glad that he didn't go in for the smooch after accepting Pekka's. I would have felt really bad. All right. You guys might as well hang out with me, because this is nearly done. As long as he listens. Okay, just gotta, you know, hurry on through Luke's chapter. And then we can get to the epilogue and see if that walkthrough was correct. I mean, I did get an achievement called Paradigm Shift, so hopefully that means something. It's gotta mean something, right guys? At least I'd like to believe. 
All right, I'll do one and two. I'm just picking random options for these guys. I could have had Hana and Luke have a happy ending, but, you know, death is coming anyway. Why make things even more painful than they have to be? One, two, buckle my shoe. I swear I really am just picking random uh, options, but they all seem to land on bad for whatever reason. Oh well. It is what it is. Tis what tis. Alright, gonna run away from that. Out of here, into Joe again. Grab my knife. Take it to a gunfight, but also grab my gun for the gunfight. And pick option one, whatever that is, when we get to the stairs. Okay, ba 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 ba. Staircase and. Ah, Marianne spoke up. Alright, respect, respect. But you still punch me. Respect, that's fine. Uh, in that case, I'll burn the letter because that's option one. And I'm gonna stop. Nah, I won't bother looking at the leaf. Nothing really changed. Let's see what happens in the epilogue. Alright, we're still getting a drink. You guys are having tea. You guys are together. Look at everybody so happy. That's much better. Okay. Between the lingering trauma and their measly attempts at normalcy, it takes a few months for Ashton Frey and Isabella Santos to return to how they used to be. Of several weeks trying to find themselves amidst the horrid images and unwanted dreams in their heads. But once the unease fades, there's only their usual banter and rapport to fall back on. The casual talk and the friendly jibes. And for the both of them, it's easy. Like breathing. Like coming home after another journey. A comfort in spite of the things they have gone through. Their days may still be filled with petty arguments and light teasing, but in the aftermath, when all has been said and done, something constant has already been forged between them. A quiet, steadfast thing they can both hold on to as they both carry on, my wayward son. Yay! Through thick and thin! Look at these goobers! You love to see it. They... Oh, and there's cinnamon rolls, too. Zack. They never talk of what happened inside the Ermengarde mansion, nor of the curse. Not in friendly conversation, never in casual banter. It is a memory better left alone, never to be disturbed. But on days it comes back to them, when the memories are particularly vivid. It is in each other they all find solace. In Rebecca's constant reassurances. In Zack's gentle encouragements. In Ashton's earnest attempts at a quip. In Isabella's warm smiles. A slight squeeze on their shoulders. A tight grip on their hands until the unease finally subsides. The curse may have taken a lot from them, but this? The friendship. It's the one thing that remains. Endures. Yay! Okay. A little bit of a happier ending for our main cast. <laughs> I'm really glad. Okay, so it is possible to have that. And I was so close to it my first time, except that I was so focused on Bella and Ash getting together that if I had just accepted the truth and the beauty that is Becca and Ashton, I could have got that right from the beginning. <laughs> oh well, lesson learned, I suppose. So yeah, there we go. Those endings are all done. And that means no more happy times, no more being alive business for these people anymore, these characters. That's all in the past. We're Dunzo McGee over here. So, with that being said, guys, our next run is an all-death run. Everyone's dying. That's the plan. They'll like each other. Up until... Well, that's kind of a lie. That won't be the case for Luke and Hana, which worries me. The fact that they have to have a negative affection for Hana to die. Got bad feels about that. But in general, everyone's going to be pretty positive towards each other right before the end. 
And so we should be getting some memory fragments, which will be interesting. So, hopefully I'll see you for that, guys. Thank you very much for joining me today, though. And until next time, I will see you later.